Welcome back. Welcome to part 45 of the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to pick up where we left off, uh, which is working on search. So totally not this screen. Before we jump into things, hit that like button down below. Say hello in the comments. It means so much and helps with the YouTube algorithm. Let's stop rambling and let's write some code. So cool, good deal. So I actually haven't worked on this in a few days, so I'm just gonna build and run, make sure nothing super strange is going on. Let's throw this guy into dark mode because all cool developers work in dark mode. And I think the last thing we tackled is actually being able to select one of these options. We put together a bottom sheet, we updated our button and the selection here, um, but we're not actually constructing a request when we hit this uh, search uh, option here. So let's actually go about constructing a request. So if memory serves, um, well, let's close up all these files. If memory serves, we have a primary view model for our search view, and hopefully I called it something reasonable like search view view model, which I in fact did, which is awesome. Now inside of here, I think I had stubbed out a execute search, which in fact I have, and luckily I actually also added some comments for myself. So thank you to um, former self. So the first thing we wanna do is create a request here based on the filters. We already have the option map in here as well as the config. Um, and we are also hanging on to the search text in here. So let me actually jump to the API and we're gonna create this request for each of the uh, endpoints being character, location, and episode. So let's do it. For character, we're gonna to go to filter character and it looks like this is the request. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing for uh, the time being and let's actually just paste it here and we can derive that request. So let me just paste it right there. So cool. So for the sake of um, just getting this up and working, what I will do is I will say switch on config and I think config holds a type on it. So config.type and we can search characters, episodes, and locations, I'll just break in these two for the time being. And now we wanna to put together our URL. So we already know that we have our base character endpoint URL here. So let's, uh, let's, let's create it. So here I'll say our var URL string will be this. And not to worry, we're gonna clean this up and make it reusable instead of hard coding um, once we kind of get it working. So here we have our character endpoint. The next thing we want to do uh, is provide a name. So what I'll do is I will say that, uh, let me do it like this. We'll say URL string plus equal question mark name equals and our search text, i.e. whatever the user enters into the search bar for our character case will be the search text. Let me start deleting this. Now, the next thing we want is a for each of the options in our option map, we want to get um, the dynamic option as well as the value associated with it. So our dynamic option already has um, a representative string for it. So status, gender and location type. But what we do want is a, a query argument, right? So this location type is not really what's going to go in our URL. Rather, what we're going to do on here is say, we'll say query argument, which will be of type string. And we will sw uh, switch on self. For the case of status, we'll just return status. For the case of gender, I want to say this is also just the word gender in lowercase. And I don't recall what location type is, but if I was a guessing man, I would say that this is type. And we'll adjust this as needed. So now that I've added that back here on our search view model, what we can do is we can loop over everything in the option map. So I can say for option and value in option map, we want to do something. And that something is as follows. We're gonna say URL string plus equals a and percent. Uh, and then we're gonna want here option.query argument equals and here we'll have the value. So uh, let's see why this is yelling at me. It looks like that warning went away. It was related to the fact that we're not using the option. And I think that's gonna be your whole URL. So now we can convert this to a URL. So I'll say guard let URL uh, will be URL with the URL string. And we also wanna pass this into a RM request. 
So next up here, we have send API call. So to do that, we are going to, I'll actually just do it up here for the time being. So I'll say request will be a RM request. We'll create it with this URL and this is a failable initializer. So now that we've got a request, we want to send it. So we'll say RM service shared execute request. And what we're expecting, hmm, so this is a pretty interesting uh, example. I actually don't know what we're expecting. So let's do string.self. Here we'll get a result back and we'll want to handle it uh, momentarily. So let's see what on earth the API returns for something like this. It looks like it's the exact same model as um, a list characters response. So when we were just getting, you know, 1 to 20, 20 to 40, where we have our info here, as well as a list of results. So let's see if we can get away with reusing that. So it's uh, rm gets all characters uh, response. And let me just click into this just to verify. So it looks uh, basically the same. We have info and results. And let's switch in here. So here we'll switch on the results. In the success case, we have our model. In the failure case, we are going to be bad citizens and just ignore this. And what I will do in this case is we'll say print a string describing uh, model dot results dot count and actually we don't even need this what I'll do is search results found and I will just toss that in like so um, one other thing that I will draw your attention to is we're not enforcing at the moment that the search text is something um, so you know, we, we perhaps want to do that. We perhaps might not want to do that. I haven't quite decided yet, but one thing is for sure that is that we want to give this a run and just make sure it works. So for the search text, what I will actually come here and do is say, make search text Rick. And this is just for testing purposes, obviously. So we actually will want to read that from our view, but let's, uh, let's just make sure it works. So let's expand the console here. I'm gonna click on this search button and cool, search results found, we actually got 20 results. And let's see what our actual, um, well, I guess that makes sense, right? So we put in Rick and we got 20 results and we don't have any options in here. So let me actually also print out our URL string. That way we can verify that the string is being computed correctly. It's a little fishy that we got 20 results, but we'll figure that out. So I'll hit search and here is the URL that we got. So Rick and Morty API character and then name equals Rick. Let's change some of this. So here maybe we'll do status is, um, let's do status is dead. We'll do search. All right, so it looks like we still found 20 and the URL is in fact appropriately put together. Let me toss this into a browser. And some of you guys have asked how I've got this JSON to be rendering like formatted. There's a Chrome plugin called JSON Viewer. So it's, you know, it's free and you can totally um, go and uh, install it in your browser. But it looks like this is correct here. We have Rick in the name. Um, and the next one, we also have Rick in the name. So it looks like these are all permutations of Rick. So it is indeed working correctly. And that is awesome. So cool, let's now actually find a way to clean all of this jazz up because it's a little ridiculous at the moment. So let's see how we can go about doing that. So we are custom creating this URL right now kind of by hand, which is not ideal for a variety of reasons. Um, so instead, what I'll perhaps do is as follows. So I'll leave that there for now and let's see how we set up our request creation. I want to say this takes in an endpoint. So in this case, we can take in character and we can probably derive this from the config type. And we also want to pass in query parameters. And this is basically just a dictionary or a map rather of this dictionary. So maybe what I can do is I can enumerate our options here. So I can say option uh, map dot enumerated, which gives us an enumeration sequence. And that sequence we can map over. So let's see how I can go about doing this. So let's see, let's see if I can compact map this. And this has our, let's call this a uh, entry. And what I'll return here is a URL query item such that the name is something 
and the value is something. And let's see if I can build that if it yells at me. It looks like it does in fact yell at me. So it looks like it takes in two things. So here we'll have the option and then here we'll have the value. Alrighty, so option here will be of type our dynamic option. Well, I guess it's actually the integer. Let's see what the value is. So value is the actual dictionary itself, the dictionary element. So let's see if I can improve this. I don't care for the index of the element in our enumeration. So we'll say here the key is option, nope, what did I call it? Value, value.key, uh, and this key is going to be as a, um, a RM dynamic option, and this part might get a little confusing, so bear with me here. So we're gonna say this key is going to be uh, value, dot key as a rm search input view model dot dynamic option and the value is going to be value dot value as a string and i will make this um i'll improve the readability of this momentarily so just bear with me so here this is yelling at me that casting from a dynamic option to dynamic option always succeeds okay so that's actually pretty good um, so we don't actually need to cast it Rather, I will just type it so our compiler explicitly knows. And here we know we have a string already. So I can make this our value. I will change this to be element so it doesn't read weird. And then here we can have this be key dot uh, query argument. So essentially the exact same thing we're doing in our for loop here, except the difference now is we are doing it in a better way, right? And then for our actual um, endpoint up here, we have hard coded its be character for now, um, which will adjust momentarily. But because of that, we can drop this, we can drop this, and we don't need the URL anymore either. We don't need to make this a failable request um, initializer. One thing we're missing here is the uh, search, uh, search text for the name. So what I'll perhaps do uh, is as follows. We will also go ahead and say this should also uh, include a URL query item where the value is, the name is the name, and the value is the search text. And perhaps this should actually be before uh, our, this should be before we do this loop over here. And this is actually yelling at me because it's saying we can't add these things together. And that actually makes sense because we're trying to add this to a, uh, the map here, so let's let's fix this. So I will say query params is as follows. And then here we are going to say query params append contents of, and we're just going to do the map in there. So this will construct our entire query parameters uh, collection, and we can pass it in here. Makes it a little more readable. I can drop this. And that's actually how we can simplify this a whole lot more. So let's see why this is yelling at me. I think I screwed up my parentheses somewhere. All right, let me make this a let now. And I think I am missing a paren over there. So let's see if that is correct. And our error over here goes away. Okay, cool, it in fact did. And now you can see we simplified our code um, way, way more, which is really nice. Um, Let's see if we can make this even cleaner because I'm getting carried away with this now because we don't want to have to copy and paste this into every case. That would be a little ridiculous. So let's actually take this whole thing um, and put it down here. So we first want to I'm gonna delete this comment. We want to create a request uh, every single time. And what I'll do here is I will say that query parameters will be out of the scope of the switch statement here. So let's actually do as follows. We'll create this here. It'll be a collection of URL query item being empty to start off with. And in this case, we'll just start appending to it. So I will append to this instead of reassigning it. We'll say append to this guy, makes sense. Here we're just hard coding the search text for the sake of this whole thing even working. And this loop that we're doing over here, if you think about it, this is gonna be the exact same thing for each of these cases. So we can actually move this outside of the switch because in every single case, we're gonna to want to loop over the options in our options map. We built it in such a way that it is reusable and generic. 
So we can move this here. And let's see what else you want to do. So right now we're hard coding the request to be characters, but wouldn't it be nice if we can say config.type.endpoint? Uh, I certainly think it would be. So let's actually jump into config.type. So let me see where that's defined. So we've got config over here. Let's jump back into this guy. You can uh, command click it and hit jump to definition. We have a type inside of here and we don't have an endpoint. So I will make an endpoint here, which will be an RM endpoint. And all we'll do is switch on self and just return the correlating endpoint. So character will be resolved to the character endpoint. I will copy and paste this and just bring in the other ones here. And while the naming looks um, you know, the same, character is character, the thing on the left is basically referring to the type and the thing on the right is referring to the RM endpoint type. And what this lets you basically do now is when you come down here and we say config.type.endpoint and if you build, hopefully Xcode gets its life together, it's able to basically convert or compute because it's a computed property, our type in the config to a particular um, endpoint. So now that we've got this, I'm also going to just copy and paste this here. I don't recall what uh, these look like, but let's take a look at our API. We'll make sure our request is correct and we'll call it a video. So for our uh, episode, it looks like this also takes a name as the search text. So what I'll do, instead of having two separate cases, we can combine these two. And then for location, let's see what location looks like. So for location, what we'll do is this takes in a ID and we can also search for a name, the name of the, oh, that's episode actually. Where did I put location? Right here, okay. So for location, we can filter by a location name. We have type and dimension. And actually, it looks like all three of these are names. So we actually don't even need to switch on this. I take that entirety, uh, my entire comment there back. So we can actually delete this whole thing. And I probably should have looked at that in the beginning, would have saved us some time, but that's okay. So here we're going to have name regardless of what we are switching on. So what we'll actually be able to do is as follows, just paste that into there. This is just testing, test uh, search text. Okay, cool. Here, what we'll do is build arguments, create request, and then here we execute the request. And then finally, we'll want to notify our, um, our actual uh, view via something, right? So the way we'll actually notify it is um, with a handler. So here we have a config that we're creating this with, but we're not creating it with any sort of um, block, right? We want to register a closure. So perhaps what I'll do here is um, I will add another function and this will be register search result handler, which takes a block, which will be of type uh, escaping. And what we'll get is um, a new type, which I haven't created yet, but for now we'll just leave it like this. And once we actually do have this registered, I'll say self dot search result handler will be the block and let's create this guy up here. This will be private var search result handler and its type just needs to match this closure here with the exception being that it'll be optional. And I want to say it's a good stopping point for the video. So once we basically get our uh, API response back here, we need to notify uh, the listener, whoever has registered for basically events, uh, which should be our view. So let me just give this a build and run. Now let's make sure this whole thing even works and then uh, we'll, we'll call it a video. So let's go ahead and expand this, jump into search. And let's see, I wanna find a character, I guess who is a male, since Rick is a male. And also check that the character is dead and I'll hit search over here. And it looks like we found 20 results. And one smart thing that I should probably do is let's print out request.url.url string. So there's dot, could have swore URL is on here, yep. Dot URL string. And I guess it doesn't actually work. Let me see what I put on request. I could have swore this has a URL on it. Maybe I am making things up. 
So yeah, we do have a URL, which basically should give us a URL string back, but it, it looks like this is um, optional. So I'll say URL, URL string. And let's see why this isn't happy. Value of type URL has no member, uh, URL string. Ah, I want absolute string, I'm making stuff up. So now that we're printing that out, we can give this a shot again, make sure everything looks good. So once again, we're gonna look for someone, let's do someone who's unknown now, whose name is Rick. So it looks like we still got 20 results and our API looks good to me, our API call over here. Um, let's go to search for the location that we won't care about. And we'll just hit search and we're looking for a location with the name of uh, Rick, which obviously should not exist. Hence we get no results back here, but our, once again, our, um, our actual endpoint looks correct. And then we'll jump into episode and here we are looking for once more the uh, episode with the name Rick in it and episodes don't allow for any options hence we don't see them here. We'll hit search and once more we have um, this showing up and no results. So let me throw this in a browser and I think one of the episodes that exists is like pilot. So I'll go ahead and search for that and it does in fact seem that we have uh, one episode that comes back, which is the pilot, which is the very first episode in the series. So cool. We've actually got the functionality working for search. We still got um, a few things to do, obviously taking the input from the field, showing said results, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all I've got for this video. Before clicking away, smash that like button down below. Say hello in the comments. Let me know if you've made it this far. Uh, if you have, congrats, because this is a lot of videos. Uh, if you're not subscribed for whatever reason, don't forget to do so. Tweet out, tweet out the series or connect on LinkedIn. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.